Greetings. I am Takur. Hi, Takur. Welcome. Uh, we have about 15 minutes. Jim has about 15 minutes. And we would like to invite you to dictate some of uh, the information for our book, which we, plan we are planning. What kind of information are you looking for? Uh, the most interesting question is the origins of Liran civilization. Can you give us a little introduction into the origins of Lirans? Yes, Liran in the, the origin of Lirans is very ancient. We used to have a plan, planet called Lyra, of course. That was the earliest uh, planet name. It meant just like your name, meant like a rock or earth. But um, it was an early term from the Lyran people that we came from the rock. But that since has been destroyed. Where it was in space is now um, questionable. It's been that long ago. However, it is, it was not in the Pleiades. We know that for sure. But it was, if you were to look at your sky and you uh, pick out Alpha Centauri to the right and to the north, the north and east of Alpha Centauri, in that area of space far behind uh, was where the Lyran planet was supposed to have been. It was destroyed by reptilians many, many, many millennia ago because they felt that um, they were being cheated. You see, it was a, like an Adam and Eve scenario there where life was very beautiful and very per um, like paradise and people got along and the primitive uh, elements of life were not as evident as they are today in most civilizations. And God had smiled on our civilization because we had been getting along so well. And therefore the reptilians did not like this and started to come around and uh, act as if they were being cheated in some way. And therefore, Yes, we had some technology back then, and there were some things that we could do to fight back, but we were not a warlike people. And so we could see that it was obvious that we were not going to win a war against these particular beings. So therefore, the next step was to find a way to get off the planet, because we heard the rumors that they were going to destroy it. And indeed, they did eventually, but not before many, many thousands of ships left the planet and scattered all over the galaxies. And that is where we are now. We are all over the place, actually. And we are happy to say that even though our planet was destroyed, we made our own. We created another planet in the Pleiades um, about... Uh, twice the size of your moon, actually, that is uh, where the Illyrian culture is now based. Is there another question? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, other participants prepare your questions about the Illyrian culture. So first, uh, why is the Illyrian culture called Illyrian? Was it uh, initially on a, on a star called Lyra? Yes, that was the name of our original planet. It was Lyra, and it means earth or rock. It has changed meanings over the year to mean the civilization on the rock. But originally, they believe it just meant earth or rock. Uh, we have a, a Lyra, a, a small constellation, constellation of Lyra. Is it the one where from you or your civilization is? The, no, that is what uh, humans have called the Lyra area, but we had nothing to do with that. Ah, that is a, an important mistake which we caught. Yes. Um, your, the human culture could have no idea where we originated. We, there is no history written that is 
uh, about that on your planet. So Lyra constellation has a Vega star, which is one of the biggest stars in the sky. Okay, so yeah. it's not where from you are. Exactly. Uh, a second important question is how did the first Lyrans look like? Were this cat feline humans? There was, yes, they are, we started as a cat-like civilization. We are still a cat-like civilization. It was very different back then, of course. Uh, the tails were still intact. The uh, ears were still intact. But as time has gone on, evolution has uh, taken the tail down to a, um, almost a stump. And the ears are no longer obvious on the outside of the head. The reason for this is because after a while, telepathy became part of our culture and we no, lo no longer needed to hear as much, and we did not need to listen as much because we started to speak in psychic languages. However, we still do have a verbal language and we still use it, but there are times when we use uh, mental telepathy to communicate. Thank you. Um Speaking, uh, staying on the topic of the felines, um, were the body and is the body of the Lyrans more like human body or more like a, a lion body? Are more like legs? a lion body. So the structure of your legs are more like the structure of uh, a lion than a human. It's they have turned out the way. They are now more like human legs, but they originally were not. Of course, there's a bump on top of the knee that is still there to remind us where we came from. But um, there is the way that the leg moves also is different in some ways. We are much taller and we need a lot more support. And so the thigh area is very large. Uh, our cats can climb the tree just using nails. Can you? Can the Lyrans do the same? We still have a form of claw, if you will, but it is not as much in use now as it used to be, of course. But we do trim them as you trim your nails as well. And so, therefore, they are not sharp like they used to be. But they do hang over the front of the finger if you would call it a finger or paw. We have, um, they do hang down over the edge and we use the hands as you would use your hands as well. Can you climb a tree using clothes? I am sure that I am still capable of climbing trees on my planet. Wonderful. Um, the audience, do you have uh, questions please? Voice, voice them up. Yes, this is Brian. Hello to Kurt. Greetings. Greetings, Brian. Yes, my question, my friend, is um, uh, through was it through just your own, uh, the Lyrans' own natural evolution that they, um, how they became more just the bipedal, more uh, human looking yeah. or the legs, or was there actually more hybridization through other species eventually, like? Uh, the north of the tall bronze. Yeah. Because, as I told you originally, we went off to different sections of the galaxies. And so we landed and, and became part of other cultures. And so there was some inbreeding with some of these cultures when, uh, when it was able to be done. But, and so, yes, we are a hybrid culture in many areas of the galaxy. On this part of the galaxy where we are now, we are, yes, hybrids with um, other species from thousands of years ago. But within the last uh, 1,000 to 1,200 years, we have not been interbreeding with any other species. So uh, the way we have brought forth our um, changes, were from long ago and from actually you have to understand that when you live on in a certain culture 
a, a certain atmosphere or a culture that is not exactly the same as where you came from, there will be eventually changes come about. And that is what happened with us as well. Of course, there were some, we were in a more telepathic region of space where we were with more telepathic beings. And so therefore, we were able to develop that skill uh, much quicker than some of the other Lyrans and other parts of space uh, because we were able to understand and grasp the ways to do some things that uh, catapulted us beyond uh, some of the other sects, if you will, other species of our own kind. Of course, just like your planet, we were not all exactly alike, and so some Lyrans um, look very much different than we do at this point and still have the ears and the tails and longer fur and things of this nature. And we are related to them from millennia ago, many, many of millennia, but we have run into them in our space travels, and we are still friendly and speak about the legends of our planet from when from the very beginnings and um we do take our culture with us wherever we go and one of the things that we take with us is that we did have a binary son or or a twin son and this was something that was uh part of our our culture for many many years from the early years that we, uh, the two suns in the sky were named Ikan and Oshonda, and they were mated as, as, and they were our creators. That was the very earliest thoughts about Ikan and, and, uh, and the very early parts of our uh, civilization. So, we still all have that in common. We take that uh, memory, if you will, along with us. And the memory of what our planet was like, we took parts of the planet with us. Some of us took trees, some of us took animals, some of us took uh, pieces of, of the culture as stone, as brick, to remind us of, of home because we were sad to have to leave. So of course we took as much of our homeland with us to remind us of the past as we could. Not that we were going to live in the past because we knew that was not possible, but we did bring it along with us because it was part of who we were and we wanted to make sure that it was remembered in our culture. Our songs, our dances from that time were written and stored in libraries on each ship uh, to, to remind us of our early cultures and what they were like and the instruments that were being played at that time, although they are very different today. They are still in our, what you might call, museums. And there are muse thousands of museums all around the galaxies with different artifacts from the original Lyra and Lyra planet. Our, our particular uh, things that we brought with us, of course, we all took many similar things. Our, we have many of our instruments and songs and many of the writings from that time that were very early and very peaceful. What a peaceful and beautiful culture it was. And we're very proud of that in the sense that we have not been a warlike people ever, and that we have developed into even a more peaceful fourth dimensional culture. We are moving into a fifth dimensional culture eventually within the next few hundred years. Just as you are moving into fourth dimension, we are moving into fifth dimension. Uh, you mentioned that you limited hybridization um, with other species in the last thousand years? How is it possible without limiting the personal freedoms? Um, it was a choice of the people. It was not that they were forbidden, but they chose on their own to uh, stay within the confines of the 
80,000 or whatever uh, population that we had when we moved on at that time. Right now, we're in the billions of people at this point. So, and we are developing a second uh, Lyran made planet. So, uh, it is a beautiful thing. They just decided that uh, they wanted to remain culturally pure in some respects. Not that we are prejudiced against others, but we wanted to keep our culture alive in a very pure way. Wonderful. And why had another question from the audience? Yes, yeah, I, I, I have a question. Yes. You, uh, you go ahead first. Yeah. Did you always know about uh, extraterrestrial life on, no. on the Luran planet? Or was that, how did open contact happen on your world? Of course, we did not always know about extraterrestrials until the reptilians started to attack. We were actually a rather peaceful culture. And we had developed technology, of course, but we have came from a very wonderful beginning and, and God had blessed us very much. And we had, of course, at the very beginning, there was a lot of uh, confusion about who we were as a people and we had many decisions to make. But we decided early on that those des decisions were to be made as a group, as a planet and we would bring ourselves together because our planet was not um, a small planet. It was a, actually a very large planet since we are still very large uh, creatures. But uh, we found that it was worth it that we would bring all our cultures together to share in the, the thoughts of what we, who we are and what we were and that we could understand that we needed to be a certain way to survive. And the cultures were brought together that way and we decided that we did want to search the sky for a better place to live because of course we were using up the, the fuel, fossil fuels and things of that nature that you have discovered on your planets as well. So we had come to a point where we had, were running low. So we were looking for new places to gather fuel, but we had not really been invaded by any other species. Our planet uh, was very large, but sort of isolated as well, because it was in the corner of a galaxy and there was very little life or outside of uh, our planet and three other planets in our solar system, there was no other life on those planets and we were sort of in an isolated area, which is just the way it was. And so we were not visited by anyone, which is unusual, I think, because I think most civilizations at the point that we were at would have had many visitations and much interference. But I think those interferences are some of the reasons why there are warlike cultures and there are uh, uh, civilizations that do not give a, get along. And I think because we were left alone and we were left to our own need that we developed into a very peaceful culture. So therefore, the other thing is... Um, after discovering the reptilians, of course, we knew that they were a warlike culture, and that actually solidified us even more into a peace-like culture, because we did not want to be them like them. There were those that thought that we should fight them, but uh, logic won out over that discussion. Logic won out, and love, actually, and peace because it was spread around our culture. Do you want to be like them or do you want to separate yourself from them? But they said, but they're going to destroy our world. And the answer of the elders was this, this world is a worn out place. We need to move on anyway. 
So let them take this world if they wish, and let us find greater pastures in the sky. Because we know that with all these millions of stars and galaxies, that there will be something for us, and that we found fuels that could last for thousands of years. So let us take these synthetic things and move on and let them have our old discarded world. We didn't realize they were going to blow it up, but we did realize that it was used up to many, much degree. So therefore, we did move on in, but we decided to move in many different places instead of just one place. Some headed out for um, places we called Senda. Senda was, a, a very populated part of space where there are many stars. And some of us sent out, went out onto the Fiora side, which was the stars that were, there was a sparse number of spars, stars. And others just sent out to go wherever they felt God was leading them to go. And therefore it was very much individualized where we went. But we took our families where, with us and we stayed in contact for many, many years and still are in contact with many of our species, many of the different uh, ships that left. But we lost track of some of them, of course. Was and, the Earth part of your initial migration? Yes, and some of them were destroyed by the Draconians or, and the Reptilians and other species that they ran into because the, we did not ha even have weapons on board. Was the Earth part of your initial migration? Yes, we, we saw Earth. There were some that went to Earth. My uh, portion of the population did not go there. We went to the Pleiades. But there were some that visited Earth and found it all right, but they, it wasn't home for them. Were Lirans ever in, involved in aggression, uh, like war? N not, not on your planet. Uh, I am sure that there are some uh, evidences that Lirans were involved in wars in other places because they were attacked, but most were destroyed because they had no weaponry. Mm -hmm. And some did develop a weaponry if they decided to protect their planet, but I do not know of any of them that are warlike at this time. So the, the Lirans were the first humans in the galaxy which gave rise to all other humans? Gave rise to what? All other humans in the galaxy. You mean Lirans? Did the Lirans, uh, are Lirans the ancestors of all the other humans in the galaxy? No, no. There are many species in the galaxy that are older than us. Who are humans. And humans are actually younger than us. So we did not develop humans, but we did have something to do with their seeding at some point. But we did not stay on Earth for long perhaps a few hundred years. Oh, I'm using humans in uh, galactic term. There is galactic humans, which I think are all dis descendants of Lirans. Ah, yes, like the Nords, mm -hmm. the Pleiadians. And the uh, Pleiadians are the ancestors of humans, yes. So are Orion humans also your descendants? Yes. There are some Orion humans that are also um, part of that ancestry and Octorians and other species as well that had uh, given some hybridization to the earth. Now let me, let me explain something to you. You realize that there are missing links in your, in your evolutionary patterns and therefore that is when quick change was happening and when other species we're changing the life forms and causing gaps in the actual evolution of mankind. This was different than with any other species. 
with every other species, you will be able to find all what they would call a missing link. But on Earth, there are definite missing links that you will never find because they were evolved so quickly because of hybridization and because of the seeding of some planets. This planet that you are on has been the object of uh, many, many visitations because of its role in the prophecy of the universe. This planet has been mentioned many times and is mentioned now in a very clear and interesting way, which I cannot go into right now, but your planet is very important in the growth of the galaxy and the universe. Thank you. Carol Carolina had another question. Yes, hi. Uh, my question is, um, are different types of feline uh, clusters lyrin, for example, lion beings or the tiger beings, are they yeah. lyrin? Yes, they have lyrin in their background, yes. And they are hybrid breeds of lyrin, yes. This is true. There are many hybrid breeds of lyrins that did interbreed once they moved out of the lyrin uh, stage, as we can call it, and moved into other galaxies and made their homes in other places. Some of them found worlds that were very primitive, that they could, uh, b that were breathable for them, and they could just inhabit it and become the population there. And not that they uh, kicked out any part of the uh, flora or fauna that were there, but just were included into it. Right, so which animal, uh, which feline in our planet would you be most close to? Well, if, if to be honest, we are closest to the lion. But if you realize, if you go back, lion is a missing link as well. They have no idea where lions began. It, it is because they came from other worlds. Um, there is a, um, a belief here that Lyrans donated lions to us and that Syrians donated dolphins and dogs. So there are, are, it, is, it is possible, but I cannot tell you if that is true or not, but it is very possible because we do, do have an animal very similar to a lion that is not Lyran, uh, that it is an animal that is a pet that is similar, just like your monkeys are similar to humans. This is similar to Lyran's, but it is not intelligent or advanced like the Lyran population. We ran out of time at this point. We have many more questions, so I suggest we just pause for now and continue when Jim has time. Very well. It was good to speak to you. Thank you very much. It was nice to talk to her. Thank you. Perhaps we can talk more about our culture next time. Absolutely. And what, we, what things that we do for rituals and things that are happening uh, annually, as you might put it, that are pertinent to our traditions. Absolutely. Beautiful. Much love to you. Much love. And have a wonderful day. Wonderful. Much love to her. Thank you, Takara. We love you. Namaste. Namaste, Takara. Namaste. 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 In a light, in like a light colored suit jacket. He said he was always, it looked like he was always impeccably dressed. I was, I was laughing as I saw him walking. Ponyapaya <laughs> So to the Shumia Wana Inana as the Supala Ina Sisi to Rosasa, Seto Sunina as the Sapila Inana. And they said, 
um, someday soon you will truly understand that you are just energy and that um, you will see that it is no, it is really no different than just um, walking from one room to the next. As natural as breathing as it is to um, come and go. And there was only love and pure love and light and comfort. Just as we experience when we are feeling the, the channeling essence within us of source energy and, and the high frequency of those beings that we feel in our heart space. It is like walking into pure love. And they are here very strongly. Sending their love. Ikoya Atisha. Namaste. Namaste. I'm sorry, I don't know what, what they mean. It's something to do that they are happy, that they are here to share this wonderful information and that they're glad that we're very interested in the history. They're always happy to share this with us. That's all I got. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. I think we're done. Namaste.